to the Avon Tyres Formula Ford 1600 National Championship here at Brands Hatch. We've got two races in the post-89 category for you today. Let's go down to Scott Woodwiss, who's in the holding area, for more details. So the tension and the atmosphere is building up here for the first race of the post-89 Formula 4 1600. On pole, this points to Niall Murray, but alongside him on the front row is going to be the number four, Stephen Daly. He's an unknown element, so watch out for him from the front row of the grid. Let's go through the full grid and the race itself with race commentator Lester Forbes. Thanks, Scott. Well, on pole position for race number one, it's Niall Murray, then it's Stephen Daly, Luke Williams lines up in third place, Jake Byrne in fourth, Stuart Goff, James Raven, Neil McLennan, and then further down the grid, it's uh, Tom MacArthur in 9th, Chris Middlehurst in 10th, Luke Cooper in 11th, Andy Charlesley in 12th, and Cowley and Pasma. And it's a fully capacity, it's a capacity grid, in fact. You can literally not squeeze another Formula Ford 1600 car onto this grid. We're in the post-89 category, the first of two races here. 27 starters, and it will be Niall Murray who leads the pack as the lights go out and we go green. It's Murray with a brilliant start. Everybody away well. What's going to happen as they head down into the first turn at Paddock Hill Bend onto lap number one? This is going to be a truly spectacular race. This is literally a warm-up for the Formula Ford Festival coming up later in the year. It's Murray leading, Williams in second. Daly in third place, then it's Jake Burns, Stuart Goff, James Raven and Neil McLennan as they all stream through sensibly Luke Cooper, a little uh, trip into the uh, the gravel there and uh, we're looking at uh, Svensson trying to make up a couple of positions. Fast and furious first couple of uh, corners here at Brands Hatches at Niall Murray who's leading from uh, Luke Williams and then it's Stephen Daly and Jake Byrne in fourth place. He's got Goff and Raven all over the back of him. It's going to be the story of the race, this, as uh, Niall Murray out in front. What can, what can uh, Luke Williams do as well? That's the brand new Ralph Furman chassis built this year for this championship. And it's up in the podium for the first time in the national championship. He's doing brilliantly so far. So, as you can see, Niall Murray, Luke Williams, Stephen Daly, no change, the top three. Then it's Jake Byrne, Goff, as we look at Middlehurst and Tom MacArthur. Chase Owen as well, and uh, Matt Cowley just behind Tom, having his own little scrap. He's got Andy Charlesley in there as well, in that uh, mid-pack. Everybody's streaming through the main overtaking point, Paddock Hill Bend. However, there was some controversy as well in the qualifying session as uh, lap times were deleted for track limits as well. Let's just hope that we don't have any uh, any um, any complaining drivers at the end of this race. Uh, that will uh, that will certainly spice up the action, especially if it uh, if it happens towards the sharp end of the grid. So hopefully we will see a properly sensible and well-behaved uh, race in terms of track limits. Because uh, well, you're not going to get away with it. Not here at Brands Hatch with the uh, one of the most modern facilities in the entire world when it comes to club racing. As we watch James Raven trying to have a go around the outside of uh, Burn. Keeps his spot, Raven down the inside, into Druids, James Raven up, makes a spot there. Well, Byrne won't be having any of that, he won't let that, uh, he won't let that one go in a hurry. Behind them is Stuart Goff and then it's uh, Neil McLennan, the number 25 car. As you can see they're all relatively bunched up at this moment in time. And the Formula Ford Festival at the end of the season is seen as one of the world's pinnacle motor racing events. This we can count as being a warm-up for that event. Early stages of this race number one in the post-89 
National Championship race for the Avon Tyres Formula Ford 1600 Championship. And out in front is Niall Murray, leading from Luke Williams to Stephen Daly. Here's Matt Cowley. With Patrick Pasma and Andy Charlesley as well. This is a fight for 11th place overall. Charlesley having a right old go at... Uh, uh, and uh, Svensson is in there as well. Everybody, this uh, a huge, big gaggle of cars. Matt Cowley is at the head of it. There he is. There's Patrick Pasma. There's Charles Lee. Svensson with the distinctly uh, green flash on his nose. And then it's Luke Cooper. And I think Jamie Thorburn is in there as well. With Dave MacArthur not far back. Yes, indeed, that is. So, this is one to watch as well. As Pasma's making an overtake, he's making a move. Yes, he's past Cowley. Patrick Pasma, past Cowley. And now, it looks like Andy Charlesley's down the inside, breaking lanes. Did he make it stick? Not quite. Cowley, he knows his way around this track. John Svensson, the uh, charismatic Belgian keeping a watching brief on what happens here. He's right in the middle of it. And Patrick Pasma at the head of this pack here. He's a very talented young thing. And he did brilliantly at the last round at Rockingham, getting a uh, fourth place and a second, seemingly from uh, nowhere, because he'd, uh, this is actually his first season of car racing, having been a uh, very capable, competent kart racer last year and in previous years. So everyone just uh, manoeuvring themselves, perhaps just waiting for an opportunity to have a go. Oh, off onto the grass. I think that was Jamie Thorburn getting passed by Dave MacArthur. Yes, indeed. So Thorburn's lost the spot to Dave. And there's Matt Cowley. Still got Andy Charlesley right behind him in the uh, red, mostly red coloured car, with John Spencer behind him, and then Luke Cooper. Further up near the front though, that's Stuart Goff, and Neil McLennan, and Chase Owen. Chase Owen, we've not heard much from him uh, so far in this race. He is there in the double zero car, in the Cliff Debson racing machine. So still at the front leading this pack, it is Niall Murray from Luke Williams, Stephen Daly, Jake Byrne. Here is Stuart Goff. As we put more laps onto the lap chart, what can Neil McLennan do about Stuart Goff? Neil McLennan mostly does race in the Scottish Formula 4 Championship, in the Formula 4 1600 Championship. He's come down to Brands, a long way down to Brands to compete in this race this weekend, and he's having a go at... Uh, he's having a go at Stuart Goff down into Paddock Hill Bend. Stuart knows his way around this track as well, though. Keeps his position. Stuart. Neil and Chase, 6th, 7th and 8th in this race so far. Here they are. And you can see the leader, Niall Murray, Luke Williams, Stephen Daly, Jake Byrne, Stuart Goff, Neil McLennan, Chase Owen. Anything could happen yet. And I literally do mean anything could happen. We could have a safety car, we could have an incident, something could bunch the pack or shake things up. Let's not uh, forget as well, track limits. The stewards here this weekend are absolutely on it like pawns. There are pressure sensors in the track, there are cameras all over the place. So, and uh, Goff defending from McLennan now. McLennan sweeps past him. Brilliant manoeuvre into Druids. Can he do anything about it? Can he come back at him? Chase Owens waiting to uh, capitalise on their, on their squabbling. Meantime, further up at the front, this is Luke Williams. If Ferrari made Formula Ford 1600 cars, it would look like this. Because he's in second position at the moment. He's got uh, Stephen Daly clambering all over the back of him with James Raven in, in fourth place. 
and he's having a go. Stephen Daly not doing every round in the championship and he's going through but he goes a bit too wide and off the track and Luke Williams streams past him again and takes his second place and James Raven wants to get a piece of the action as well. So it's Williams in second, Daly in third, Raven in fourth and out in front this is brilliant news he'll be laughing his head off will Niall Murray look at the gap he's, he's managed to close already between him and second place Williams who goes a bit too wide Stephen Daly may be having a little look at the inside can he can he get a good run out of curve up the straight can Williams he, I, he might be losing a spot here Williams he might be losing his second place and he does. Daly up into second position. Williams down to third. And James Raven is in fourth place. And could that be third place for Raven? He's having a go. They're side by side. This is brilliant stuff. Williams not letting anybody through, it seems. Not easily, anyway. Niall Murray out in front, a long way out, a long way back now to second place, Stephen Daly. And then it's Williams in third place. And James Raven in fourth place, with Jake Byrne in fifth at the moment, and catching this battle. This is sensational stuff here at Brands Hatch in the first of the post-89 class categories race. And James Raven having a look at Luke Williams up the inside. Can he make it stick? Has Luke lost another place? Yes, he has, because up goes James Raven into third place in this race so far. And uh, surely Jake Byrne will be looking to capitalise on uh, on the nightmare couple of laps that Luke Williams has just had. As Jake Byrne is catching this pack. Niall Murray is, is uh, way, way out in front. He's many, many seconds way out in front now. He's uh, he, he, Oh, and that is number 27. That is James Rowe. He stopped. Well, what happened there? I don't think he had contact with anybody. He stopped. He was in 19th place in this space. And he's actually in the same car as that man, Luke Williams, who's currently in fourth place at the moment in this race. Another the... Uh, the team are uh, viewing it as uh, this particular season anyway as a, uh, a development year with it being the uh, car's first season out on track so any uh, perhaps possible technical gremlins maybe that uh, caused James to stop should be ironed out in time for the next season of racing and we have a safety car safety car is out so everybody will hold stations as James Rowe's vehicle will be collected. So the race will come to a premature pause. And I think we needed it as well. And this will, this will actually make things a lot more spicy because uh, Niall Murray was streaking away with him. There's no other word to say. Uh, he was absolutely dominating up out in front um, with the... Uh, um, Williams putting on a, uh, a battle of to try and keep everybody behind him in second place but this safety car will mean that everybody gets bunched up once again but Mark has been let through MSV safety car here at Brands Hatch so it's race one of two in the Avon Tyres Formula Ford 1600 Championship National Championship race one in the post-89 category. We've still got a pre-90 championship race is coming up. Safety car is out to recover the stricken James Rowe Ralph Furman chassis car, which uh, retired from the race from 19th place. Incidentally, by the way, I did mention at the start of the race or earlier on about penalties and track limits as well we've just been given a notice that there has been some sensational news uh, Stephen Daly in second position and James Raven in third 
have both been given five second penalties in this race, as has 10th place man Chris Middlehurst as well. Wow, that will really shake up things now. Five second penalties for two of the podium three. Oh dear, well I did fear something dramatic and massive like that was going to happen. And it has. Understandably, they will be have... Um, I didn't... We, we probably wouldn't have even seen it, but they would have been scrapping amongst each other, fighting for position, and that's probably how it happened, to be honest. Safety car lights are out. And, uh, well, I wonder if they've got the message. I wonder if they know that they've got the penalties. Because five seconds in this, uh, in this group will not put them um, very high up at all. Wow, well, um, this is sensational. Niall Murray resumes racing as we go green once again. James Raven is in third place with a penalty. Stephen Daly in second place on track with a penalty. I'm sure they'll carry on racing regardless anyway. We will see exactly what does happen. It's Chris Middlehurst. He's got a five-second penalty as well. It will all be ordered out and shaken out at the end of the race as the results will be corrected then. So here's the order then. It is Niall Murray out in front with uh, Stephen Daly in second on track. James Raven in third place on track at the moment. But Jack Byrne, who's fourth, will inherit second place if, let's say, the race finish now. Luke Williams will stand to make a, a nice couple of spots as well with those uh, couple of guys getting penalties also. Oh, and that is John, uh, John Spencer who's uh, had a bit of a drama. You can always tell John Svensson he has the green-coloured uh, nose as well, so I don't know what happened to him. He was in 14th place in this race. He'll carry on, though. So uh, here they are again. Uh, Svensson now fighting with uh, Thorburn. This is David Thorburn. Yes. And this is a fight further way down the order, though. Uh, meantime, further up at the front, it's uh, third place on track. James Raven fighting with Jake Byrne. Surely they would have known all by now that uh, the second and third place men have five second penalties. And that's probably why Jake Byrne isn't going to really uh, push the matter so much. Uh, if he's sensible, if he knows about it, he will certainly hand back and... Uh, inherit second place but Niall Murray also has to obey these track limits as well he can't go around uh, acting uh, acting cocky as well pushing the limit literally like the second and third place men have done he still has to keep within the yellow uh, within the white lines and there's no point complaining about it to the stewards either because they they literally do take a picture of you so you can go up after the race and say no, I wasn't so uh, I, I kept within the white lines uh, you'll get shown a, a, an actual photograph of him being, well, not inside the track limits. And just to be clear, all of the four wheels, as Raven and Daly still battle on gallantly between themselves, not for position, but either way. Uh, and oh, that is Jack Wolfenden and Vincent J going for a, a little spin and synchronicity, maybe. And the uh, uh, Raven and Daly still fighting it out. You've got to hand it to them. They do put on a good show, even if it is largely um, pointless, let's say, because Jake Byrne, you, I, I'm imagining that now that Jake Byrne has got the message and he is just holding back. These two literally out fighting for themselves, fighting for fun, and why not? Because it is fun to watch uh, James Raven. Uh, I was going to say in second position, but that might still be Stephen Daly yet. Kyle Murray is in a first position overall in this race. Excellent stuff here on the Avon Tyres Formula Ford 1600 National Championship in the post-89 category here at Brands Hatch. Here comes Jake Byrne. Is he going to have a little look? He's got Luke Williams behind him to defend from, so he can't be too complacent. And that will be an interesting scrap as well. Luke Williams 
gets ahead, but he loses a spot. He goes too deep, and now James Byrne gets back past him again. And Neil McLennan is keeping, uh, keeping, keeping these two in check. A little squiggle from Stephen Daly puts James Raven back into second on track. What great fun this is when there's uh, when there isn't uh, two podiums at stake. Maybe they don't know. James Raven going to stick it down into Paddock Hill Bend, and uh, Stephen Daly doesn't race in every round of the national championship. He was uh, phenomenally quick uh, at the Zandvoort round um, earlier this year, where he actually won the. Marcel Albers trophy uh, brilliantly, which is a non-championship round. Stephen Daly doing brilliantly to uh, put together a full season, a full campaign, if you like. And well, with action and drama like this that he's providing, you'd have to say someone sign him up or give him some money to be able to do a full campaign. This is brilliant. James Raven still in second position. Stephen Daly pushing, pushing, pushing in third place. And then it's Jake Byrne and Luke Williams with Neil McLennan catching all of them. With Stuart Goff in there as well. And I think I spot Luke Cooper not too far behind. Has everyone had heads up to Druids? Brilliant stuff, this. This all means that Niall Murray has a, a, a massive cushion way out in front. He's not being challenged at all. He only has to look at the gap. He only has to keep going, really. Not exactly, but uh, this is uh, Stuart Goff and Chase Owen further behind. And he's sideways, he's flat out sideways as he comes around the final corner. Niall Murray. To win the race brilliantly in race number one in post 89 in the national championship, it will be a uh, it will be Jake Byrne in second place who inherits that second place. Luke Williams in third, Neil McLennan fourth, Goff fifth, Owen sixth, Pasma, MacArthur, Raven, and Daly get dropped down to ninth place after their penalties. With Niall Murray setting the fastest lap of the race with a 50.5. Let's go down to Scott Woodwiss and hear what everybody thought on the podium. Well, that was a cracking way to start the racing weekend for the post 89 Formula Ford. And the top three are up on the podium with me here, starting off with. The man who won the race, quite convincingly, Niall Murray. Niall, despite a safety car, you managed to get away twice and still be the class to fill. That was a pretty stellar drive. Yeah, thanks. Um, it was it was one, probably one of the toughest races um, because, it's, you know, at the start, there was only a couple of tenths ahead of Luke the whole, you know, first 10 or 15 minutes. So it was just literally looking at my, looking at my uh, timer every single time we got across the line thinking, come on, another tenth, another tenth. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, obviously, the safety car boards came out, it was, it was gutted, but thankfully uh, the guys were battling then after the safety car, so let me get away again. And with that, was there any concern that guys would kind of catch up and maybe try and take advantage, or were they, do you think they were still battling much, each other too much to do that? Yeah, well, at the start, I, uh, when I started to pull away a little bit from Luke, I thought maybe when, when Stephen got him, he, he might be able to catch me, because he was sort of next next to me uh, in qualifying, so... Had that little bit, little bit of a worry, but uh, thankfully the guys bat battled a fair bit. Luke didn't didn't make it easy for him. Um, and the same then towards the end when when uh, when James got a, got ahead of Stephen, I sort of thought maybe he'd be able to catch me. But yeah, thankfully again they they, they battled so let me get away. There's another key win, so well on that one, uh, Nar brilliant stuff. Jake, a really crucial second place for you. Brilliant for you to come over to Brands Hatch, and uh, that was worthwhile in a battle which seemed to go on and on. Yeah, it was. Uh... It's always a bit mad when you come over to Brands. Uh, I remember the festival last year was exactly the same, you know, and it's more of a, a type of race where you bide your time and wait and see what happens, especially with the grid tomorrow being on your finishing position rather than um, second fastest laps. So, yeah, it was just, we saw, me and Luke both saw the uh, penalty board for both, both James and Stephen, so we knew we didn't really need to get involved in their fight, um, just stay behind them and we'd finished on the, on the podium. Of course, that puts you on the front row of the grid for the second race, so uh, you might possibly fancy your chances, or do you think these guys are going to give you too much headaches? Um, I think if I can get past Niall off the start, uh, I had a really good start in that race, so if I get that again, I don't see any reason why I can't keep him behind me. It will be a bit difficult, 
uh, well, I'll relish the opportunity. Excellent. Well, well done, second Thank place. You. Great job. And we're going to have a chat also with uh, Luke Williams in third place. Now, Luke, I know we sort of spoke to you earlier on. It seems as though the, uh, the new Fermat car's coming good, a podium for you, and uh, that was well hard fought as well. Yeah, very good. I mean, we got a brilliant start. We managed to jump into second and hold on, Niall, hold on to Niall for sort of maybe 10 laps, and then because it's a bit of an unknown in the car, it's the first time we've really run a full race distance. Um, we started getting a bit of oversteer, uh, started, uh, I glazed the pads early on, so didn't have the best braking. Um, but it's, we're learning every time we go out now, so hopefully tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll be uh, even faster. Of course, you'll be starting uh, towards the front again for race two, so maybe some hopes of getting another podium? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Jake got a brilliant start today, so hopefully if he gets that from P2, he'll jump Niall at the start and we'll make a race of it out of all of us. But... Uh, if we don't battle, I think we'll maybe hold on to Nile a bit easier. Um, he's certainly got the pace this weekend, but we'll try our hardest. Excellent stuff. Well done. So there's your top three for race number one. And let's continue preparations as race number two is coming up shortly.